So, um, something about my presentation. At first, I want to make a little um, introduction about the topic, why it is important, and I want to underlie a few facts and figures about this. And I want to say something about the legal requirements and uh, the changes. Um, I have some results of surveys by companies and the population in Germany, and um, at least I want to say something about the solutions. Okay, the introduction. Why is it important of uh, reconciling elderly care and work? In Germany, it has two very um, specific points. The one point is the demographic change um, that is really hard in Germany. We have a rising life expectancy and the share of elderly people increase. And we have a very short birth rate uh, decrease also, and significantly more elderly people need care. And another point is that the employment rate, especially in the case of the moon, increases, and uh, this means that we have an increasing number of care, uh, care dependents and a decreasing number of caregivers. So, employers and the possibilities of reconciling elderly care and work is a very important challenge for policies and business. So now I have some facts and figures about it, about this, the German situation. Germany has the oldest population in Europe, that's a fact, and more than every five person is uh, 65 or older, and you can see in 1991 it was only 49%, so 49%. Uh, and uh, another point is that in Germany only 13.4% uh, population is younger than 15 years, and you can see 10 years before it was 20%. And the birth rate per woman in Germany is really slow, it's 1.46. And uh, for a moment, I have also the numbers of uh, Czech, it's 1.43. And as we have guests here from Poland and from Slovakia, I have also the numbers. Um, in Poland, it's a uh, bit more little, it's 1.3 in 2011, and in Slovakia, it's uh, 1.45. Um, and the uh, women's employment rate has increased rapidly during the last 10 years and is now one of the highest in Europe. You can see 10 years before it was 58.7, and uh, now we are by 68%. Uh, yeah. And but please do not think that these are all uh, full uh, full time jobs. Um, very uh, a real high proportion of this are um, part time jobs, and that woman uh, works in marginal um, working conditions. So this is the graphic about the age structure in Germany. Um, on the Left side, you can see uh, the aging years from the year 1910, and you can see that we have many, many young people, and very so part of them, uh, of the people are uh, older. And okay, it's uh, some it's something of the uh, uh, second world craft is also a reason. But you can see 1950, you can see that um, the proportion, the, uh, the age structure um, um, change. And now, the last on the right side, um, the graphic, you can see that um, the, the older generation is nearly the same as the young people, and you can see there is a real big demographic change in Germany. And the blue lines you can see on the right uh, page uh, graphic, um, that is um, a prognostic about the year 2060. And um, you can see um, the, it, it will be higher and we will get a real problem because there are not so many young people and a lot of old people and we have to find a solution to, um, to um, have um, that they can, oh, sorry, <laughs> we find a solution uh, for the dependent care. Um, yeah. Okay, the solution. Uh, the legal requirements. In Germany, we have um, an insurance named long-term care insurance. Uh, it um, is an insurance which we have since 1995. That is uh, our youngest insurance. We have altogether five. Um, and this insurance covers
tell us the financial risk of the need for care. And uh, it is a compulsory insurance, that means that everyone has to, uh, have to pay for it, uh, every employer, employ, employee. And it's not a full-fledged insurance, it provides uh, basic social security in the form of supportive assistance. And that is really a very uh, important point, that it's only the basic, because it's not, uh, absolutely not enough for the care facility and the possibilities and the need. The medical services of the insurance companies access if care is needed and in which category it is needed. And we have in Germany three categories of care benefits. It's uh, category one, it's the considerable need of care. The category two is the severe need of care. And, oh, I see it's number three. <laughs> it's the extreme need of care. And if uh, it, it depends in which uh, category uh, the dependent person is, so you get more or less uh, benefits. The benefits. Um, the benefits uh, is on the one side, uh, the insurer provides benefits in kind, that is uh, surf, uh, nurse services um, and uh, cash benefits. Um, this is to finance the basic personal care and to help with household chores. And in addition, the following benefits to first are provided that are free nursing care courses for relatives and volunteer carriers, uh, carers care allowance for carers recruited by the insured person, day and nighttime care, but day and nighttime uh, care is not what you have with usually, it's not the normal part, it's something like if uh, the caregiver is ill or something, so you have the possibility that someone else um, has the care in this time. And uh, nursing aids and technical uh, appliances and subsidized for equipping the insured person's home to facilitate uh, the care. Um, the home care and international care, uh, you can care at home, can be financed by getting cash allowance and the assistance can also be supplied by professional caregivers covered by the care insurance funds. And when relatives or friends provide care, they receive a monthly care allowance and automatic uh, pension and assist assistance insurance for the duration of their care activities. So, um, we have um, the Home Care Leave Act, that is uh, very important. Uh, we could talk about it a little bit, I want to do it a little bit more in deep. Uh, there are two instruments which regulate the working time for employees with care responsibility. On the one side is the short term absence from work, they have the possibility to take up to 10 working days off for care of uh, relatives, elderly relatives in the most case. Uh, and in case of emergency. The leave is independent of enterprise and carrier of employment at the company. Okay. <laughs> okay, the long term absence from work. The possibility to take up to six months of uh, off for care, elder relatives in the home environment, and that is no right of payment, but it is possible to change the working time into part time. And what is absolutely new in Germany. Uh, that we have since uh, 2011 or January 2012 is the Family Care Leave Act. It is a little bit complicated, um, but uh, that is something what employers have the possibility to reduce their weekly working hours to a maximum of 15 hours for a period of up to 24 months to care for elder relatives. So, some care figures. Germany spent 1.3% uh, of the uh, GDP. Um, I don't know the English word, it's in Germany, Bruttosozialprodukt, I hope you know it. <laughs> uh, on long term nursing care in 2008, of which 0.9% uh, was publicly founded, and 2.42 uh, million people used the benefits of the long term care insurance and most of the beneficiaries, that are around 1.67 million people, receive home care and that is usually by relatives. And um, uh, some statistics uh, from the end of 2009 about the type of care for long-term care patients. Um, most are the long-term care at home and that are um, along uh, by the relatives. You can see that is more than one, one, 1 million. 
and long-term care at home together um, the home care services it's uh, also 24% uh, of the whole, um, uh, uh, the whole number and long-term care and nursing homes that are 30% of the uh, dependent care. What's about the caregivers? About 30% of the employees in the age between 40 and 65 take care for relatives and um, employment conditions of the caregivers are that we half of them are full, have full-time contracts 30% of them have part-time contracts and 30% have the marginal employed or they are not employed. And what is also very interesting for Germany, I think, is that 60% uh, of the caregivers are women and 40% are men. I think that it's a very high uh, number uh, for the case that uh, some years ago this percentage by the men was really much more slow. So we are coming. <laughs> So, the challenge is, um, if um, the caregiver, uh, if the caregiver has uh, a good possibility uh, to reconcile work and uh, care, there are some uh, aspects very important. One aspect is the objective situation. Um, that means that, uh, that there are a care arrangement and the resources available to develop a better balance. And um, it means that uh, it's a good situation in the workplace and its organization if you have um, the possibility of flexible working times and so on. And of course the demand, that concerns the demand of um, the dependent <coughs> care. And uh, another one is the support coming from other kids that are, for example, friends and uh, care services, how, uh, how um, <coughs> much possibilities the uh, caregiver has to support, uh, to get support from them. And of course the colleagues are very important in this way and supervisors at work. And the subjective situation, how carriers uh, precise their rule and feel having the overall situation under control or not is of course also very important. And policies concerning caring and working time arrangements are crucial to reach a better support to private caregivers. So why is a good reconciliation important? Um, I think um, if an employer uh, has no good uh, possibilities for his or her um, employees, um, it, it could be that, uh, that you have times of absence or reduced productivity, uh, the idea of staff members, increased um, fluctuation or a loss of operational experience, knowledge, by the employees. And supporting working conditions increase the loyalty and the working morale of the employees and the productivity. Uh, productivity. Companies have to talk about the topic uh, care to prevent and counteract stigma. Very often, uh, with, this is nothing what is in the companies for, for speaking it. Employees often are worried to talk about it, afraid for having professional disadvantages. And without communication, the companies do not know how strong the pressures is and cannot provide adequate solutions. Another point is the structurally ensuring, offering flexible working conditions. Ulrike said that before. It's, it's one of the very first, uh, very important points. Important as duration, process, and effort in caring relatives often is not foreseeable. And so it is very, very important to have very flexible structures. And having a personal responsibility for the topic is also very important. It underlines the high importance on behalf of the company and shows that they have a support order. And the responsible person supports the employee by finding a solution. And further support could cover uh, legal aspects or trainings and qualifications. And the last point is um, that the companies have a cooperation with local information centers and supporting networks because it's important as in most cases the employees as well as the employers do not have the necessary professional and the legal know-how concerning this topic and that is very important to, to get it from professions. And potential addresses are local, regional and countrywide consulting agencies and uh, with such support the companies could develop stable solutions and can provide adequate and individual information and supporting possibilities in urgent care cases. So.
Sorry, I hope it was not too, too much. Okay, so thank you for your attention.